Hey guys, Boy here, and today we're gonna talk about Battle for Ursa. This is not new. I've always played Battle for Ursa TI1, and at least from what I can remember, the first player I saw playing Battle for Ursa in this patch with the new changes and the new context was Bernie. I'm here to help you understand why and then how to play this new version of the hero. I know this part is a little boring, so I'll use some bear footage to make this less of a bummer. Ursa's move speed got nerfed. His strength gain got nerfed. Overpower got gutted. Phase Boots gives him less move speed than before because of the changes, and more importantly, his mana region talent got changed to level 15. And nerfed at the same time. All of this destroyed Ursa's early game power spike, but that doesn't mean the hero sucks. In fact, he is still a very reliable lane dominating hero. The only thing he needed was a push in a new direction. Guess what item got a ton of buffs lately? Damage from 45 to 60, Ring of Health and Voidstone got cheaper and better, and that's pretty much it. In the laning stage, the skill build Mu goes for every game is still the same we talked about last time, 202. The difference is that people start maxing free swipes after it, but maxing Earthshock and then passive is the way to go. You're probably thinking why, and it's quite easy. If you Earthshock a Creep Wave, that's 900 damage for 80 mana. If you use Overpower, even with Phase Boots, you will be doing 700 damage, and that's if you're hitting the same target, usually you're gonna be doing like 500 damage. Since Phase doesn't synergize with the old playstyle, using Earthshock to farm faster with Thread Switching becomes a great way to get an early Battle Fury and scale into later power spikes that Ursa has. In terms of laning stage, the hero is still the same as I talked about, but the build Moogles for every game is quite unique, so I decided to share it. Quellen Blade, 3 Mangoes, 2 Tangles, and Branch. The Mangoes might be weird, but it makes a lot of sense actually. One Ring of Region costs 225 gold and gives you 1.75 HP region. But it also becomes nothing interesting for your hero. Yet Mangoes gives you more HP region and at the same time they can be used for mana. He then get Boots and Arbor Venom every game and sometimes picks a stick or a wand before that if the lane asks for it. But overall, the real early strength of this tile is the level 4 Earthshock combined with Arbor Venom's low. Going back to my previous point though, in general, Mu very rarely uses the mangoes unless he can get a kill out of it, and besides sustaining the lane, they provide some HP region for jungling until he gets his ring of region to then take no damage when he hits jungle creeps. Even though it feels like you're gonna be playing anti-mage from what I said, it's hardly the case actually. Since you max Earthshock, you don't need the move speed from phase to get kills anymore. You can get the best from both worlds, a hero that can get kills really easily, but also farms really fast. The third point of Earthshock level 5 really makes this hero's TP rotation super deadly, but in no way stops Ursa from jungling early because of the mangoes and the Ring of Health region. The reason for Sanjinyasha being the item he gets every game after Battle Fury is that you're not playing the old Ursa anymore. Basher is good, yes, but the only thing it does is makes you good at fighting, and until you're level 20, you're kinda mad at fighting. Your early Earthshock power spike is good, but with Battle Fury first item, what you want to be doing is shoving waves on stop and scaling. Mu does join his allies in smokes and fights, but overall, the goal is not to crush the game in 25 minutes like the old Ursa, even though sometimes that can be possible. and the move speed from Say is awesome, and since he always gets a Tannic after it, the lifesteal amp as well as the status resistance with both items and your ult makes you a beast. Another amazing thing about Battle Fury is that while it might feel like you're wasting your hero's potential early by getting Earthshock instead of Overpower, watch how quickly Mu can take this creep wave 18 minutes into a game. Overpower actually becomes much better wave clear wise once you max it with Battle Fury on, and that is actually very powerful in the meta of summon heroes, Helm of the Dominator creeps, Chance, Enchantress, etc. Another aspect of Battle Fury Ursa you might be overlooking is that you can cleave with Fury Swipes. I'm not sure if the skill always worked like that, but it does work now, and because they buff the cleave damage on heroes, you can actually do a ton of damage in teamfights. Watch how he kills Void by attacking the Beastmaster here. 
One thing worth mentioning when we're talking how to fight Reversa is the change that Enrage gives status resistance. Mu constantly uses the spell in order to deal with long duration disables like Primal Roar, Lasso and others. In this clip he waits Batrider to fully turn because that's when he can cast Lasso and well, and this means it's not gonna last for a long time. In this clip, he just pops the spell to make sure he can get the kill, and any stun that's gonna be used is not gonna matter that much. Abyssal Blade or Blink is always the fourth item who goes for, whether it's Basher into Blink Abyssal or Abyssal into Blink. These two items together make your hero incredible in fights. Even in high ground sieges, because of your status resistance and lifesteal, you can dive really deep with very little fear, making sure you're zoning people and then you can hit towers. Just so we are clear, you're not playing anti-mage. Ursa from level 7 forward can constantly join fights because of enrage. The cooldown is 50 seconds at level 1, so super low, and even with only treads, Arbovino and Perseverance, you can aid your team against most drafts, and that's really why this hero can shine. He has a balance of being great at fight and being able to farm all the time, and that means you're gonna scale anyways, so you can balance whether you want to fight a lot early or just farm in case the enemy is also being really passive. Having a choice is always something really powerful in Dota 2. Talent-wise, there were a couple of changes. The HP at level 10 is something Mu gets more often than not, although when no burst damage was available, he did pick the other talent up, but always after maxing overpower, since you don't really need neither of the two talents this early, unless you're being crushed. Mana region is never picked up, since you already have a lot of mana region with Battle Fury, and that talent got super nerfed, and obviously, at 20 and 25, the choices are quite easy. The damage on 40 swipes is great, and 3 extra attacks is crazy good, especially when you have Battle Fury. Another thing that Battle Fury fixes on Ursa is that he can siege really well, since the item gives a ton of raw damage, whereas with his old items like BKB and Abyssal, he will tickle towers and waste a lot of Aegis's trying to go high ground, because he just does it too slow, meaning people can split push or kill you before you even do significant damage. Guys, thank you a lot for watching, commenting and subscribing. If you want to know my coaching rates, DM me on Twitter to get all of the information. If you started playing Dota because of COVID-19 or because of the Compendium, you can check our Discord channel. There's a ton of people from all around the world. Maybe you don't like playing Dota by yourself. You can find some cool friends there. Finally, if you want to help the channel, check our Patreon rewards. Maybe there's something there that interests you. And finally, if you want to see me stream or play, make sure to check my Twitch channel. Have a good one, guys. Bye.